their surprises make me feel no need for surprises and you know that your nothing is my everything everything i know your heart's from the east coast baby believe me when i tell you everything i say it's true and yeah i got something to say to you Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas, and today's surfboard review is on the Hydra Short by Daniel Thompson. Dama, we're stoked to have you on the show, and have been having a blast surfing with you. Thanks for having us, Noel. Yeah, absolutely. Stoked to be here. Yeah. So, three sessions so far. We've right. been pushing the boards in a variety of conditions, like windy, overhead, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've had an overhead, windy sesh, um, kind of testing the limits of the tech and the design and and then we've had like a kind of a you know every day chest a head high sure. and rippable and um and then another session earlier earlier on and that was also fun so it's yeah. been it's been a good variety and hopefully we got <clears throat> at least one more session left to mm -hmm. finish up the footage maybe riding in a little bit smaller surf and test it in a smaller range but guys this is going to be a great review get your favorite drink sit back enjoy the show when you were creating this design, tell us like, what's this board designed for? What should I be feeling out of it? That kind of thing. Yeah, sure. So the Hydra Short is a continuation of the Hydra Nought design, which was a board designed for really powerful, chunky waves, tube riding and such. So the Hydra Short was a natural progression to be a more all-round design, suitable for smaller waves and everyday kind of conditions. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, it's a it's a real compact outline. It features that nice um, torpedo nose profile. Right. So it's super maneuverable. Um, feels super fun to ride, uh, and you know it's got a pretty moderate rocker. It's not too extreme, so it's a user friendly board, and um, I think people are gonna love it for their for their day to day surfing experience. Sure. Okay. So let's talk about the wave range. Mm. So I just want to point out, Firewire says what it says on the website. What you des what size wave did you design this for? And then what do you think our community will most enjoy about it? Okay. Well, the wave, the ideal wave range for this board has evolved a little bit from conception to um, market. Uh, at this point in time, or the final final say, it's, a, it's an all-round design that's designed to be from smaller waves to your everyday conditions. So we would say roughly about two to five feet. We definitely wouldn't say it's a great groveler. That would be a little bit under its range. Sure. But, you know, it goes well in a small wave so long as it's got a bit of face tension and shape to it. So sure. a two to five feet would be pretty pretty ideal. Um, personally, I, I enjoy it in the three to five foot range and, and up to six foot feels really, really solid. Sure. Tell me a little bit about how the board feels under your feet and, mm -hmm. and what we can expect when we ride this board and then I'll do the same. Okay. Well, I think the first thing you'll notice with the Hydra Short, it's it's super electric underfoot. It's really, really responsive. The combination of the tech, the helium technology by Firewire, and also the bottom contours that I apply to my designs, the quad inside single concave, that combination will give you a ton of response and a ton of spring out of your turns. Sure. So that's the, the first thing you'll notice. It's a really responsive, performancey feel. But at the same time, it's got a pretty moderate rocker, so it, it it'll carry you know carry you through the turns without too much effort, and um, it's a pretty easy board to ride overall. Sure, is that I, how you yeah, felt? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it paddles really well mm -hmm. um, for a board that has continuous rocker. I, I felt like it did carry speed real well. You know, as we start talking about fins with your particular quad inside single concave for me over. The time of reviewing your boards, I've learned that to ride a medium fin because I'm 160 pounds. Mm -hmm. And the reason I choose a medium fin with your board is because it is carrying enough speed that I don't need to try and push it with a large fin. Right. So what I like about that is I got the speed, I got the hold, and I can put it on rail and it will hold real nice. But I also like that because I'm using a medium fin now, it has less fin depth. I'm getting that tail a little bit looser sure. and it's feeling a little bit spicier than more 
more or less a board that I would ride with a large fin that it's maybe giving me a little bit too much hold when I want it to release a bit more. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. The, the hull design is going to give you a lot of grip to the water and help you engage your turns. And you don't need too much fin, you know, sure. you're going to have that grip. It's also got that little channel out the tail. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a medium fin will generally be ideal for a guy of our weight, around right. the 155, 160. Right. And um, yeah, obviously you can experiment with larger fins in bigger ways when you want to try to um, increase hold. Yeah, and, and test the limits of what the board's capable of. Sure. So yeah, it's got a lot of range, but generally a medium or a smaller fin than your traditional shape would okay. probably be ideal. Right, now yep. you did talk about um, wave height, mm. you know, and the ideal. So I did get a couple, I felt like they were about six foot lefts that came in, wave got real steep, the board held really good and mm. the offshores were blowing pretty hard and I felt like coming off the bottom and I pick a section and the board was whipping these quick mm. wraps like right in the right at the top with yep, having that absolutely. release yep. and it and I could really feel the hold I felt like I never felt like I was pushing the board to its limit at six foot I personally think that where I surf at the point breaks, right. it could probably even extend out a little bit more like a seven foot. Yeah, well, I guess it depends on the the, the wave and the power of the wave, right. you know, like somewhere like a Hawaiian size, sure, a Hawaiian power wave of that, right. to that height would be probably pretty extreme. Sure. But a, a, a pretty slow moving wave um, like Southern California, it's probably gonna handle them. You right. might be able to um, even test the limits more so, like you said. Right. Yeah. And then pushing the lower end range at, you know, like you said, that two foot and up, if it's got a little bit of punch to it, yeah, it carries its speed real mm -hmm. well. Um, for me, I felt like the helium construction had that pop or projection, mm. that explosiveness that yeah. I like in an EPS. It generates a lot of speed. Right. Out of, the, out of the tech will load up and spring you through a turn. So you feel a lot of acceleration through your turn. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's exactly how it felt under my feet. Awesome. So we kind of scratched the surface on fins, but let's talk about that. Sure. Tell me what you've been testing and what you like. Yeah, so first off, I'll, I'll check out the quad. Um, I've been riding the quad quite a lot around home in Australia. Um, open face point breaks and such, or anything with a with an open you know face or even a fatter wave, a quad really feels like it excels. Sure. Just gives you that speed and, and glide through fatter sections and, um, and whenever you're drawing nice S turn kind of approach, mm -hmm. I think the quad feels really, really good. Sure. On the other hand, um, if the waves are more peaky and, and kind of like, you know, like a suckier kind of bowlier wave mm -hmm. where you really want to get the board vertical, um, the thruster, um, the, the vapor cores we, we've been riding yeah. this week have felt really, really good. So, so just getting, getting the board quickly up into the pocket. Right and turning a tighter line, um, the thruster is definitely the go-to, which is, I guess is pretty much the, the, the correct thought process, process with any board. Sure. So we started on the second session we surfed together. It was a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. It was a uh, combo swell, so the point break wasn't really lined up. So to go to your conversation or what you said about open face quad, we both started out as quads, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, and both of us came in and switched the thruster and the sure. board turned on. Like yeah. it was get your turn off, your first turn off quick yeah. and then maybe get a wrap and it was over. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the thruster for me really turned on and then I kind of stayed on it. And I, I agree. So like the beta 2.0, this is the vapor core. I ran this in that five, six foot surf. Oh my gosh, the yeah. pop, not only from the construction, but it was enhanced with that vibrant, explosive feel with these fins. Yeah. And I remember um, when we swapped boards, you started riding this one, mm -hmm. and you were seeing somewhat the similar yeah, feeling, right? Yeah, I immediately was really stoked on that combination of that nice stiff carbon fin with the with the really responsive feel of the helium tech was a was a really good blend. So, right. and especially when you wanted to get from the bottom of the wave to the top really really fast, it was just felt spot on. So right. let's look at some waves together. This is a good size wave. I'd say five to six foot. The board's feeling solid off the bottom and top. And one thing I noticed about the Hydro Shore is it's throwing a good amount of spray on my turns. Now I'd say this is probably a two foot wave. You can see the board's carrying good speed and it feels good on rail. Look at the spray. Great little turn right into a bottom turn, right back into a top turn again. So the board's got good flow too. 
This wave's excellent. Look at the spray. I really like how top to bottom, right into bottom turns with no hesitation. Again, I always stress flow on a board because it's really important to me and I'm fin be able to finish it strong. I love this left. Watch, this is the money turn right here. Oh, that was so rebounding so quick and the board just felt great the whole time. So let's put the Hydra Short in a board category. I'm calling it a daily driver. Best suited for that intermediate all the way to expert level surfers. In wave range, I think it's best in three to six foot surf. Now, if you put it in one to two, I think it'll struggle. And for some of the guys in our community, it'll be a daily driver slash high performance shortboard. Now, after surfing it in a bunch of different wave types and conditions, I liked it best as a thruster across the board compared to quad. Now, after spending a ton of time with Tomo, we just kept accumulating and compiling great content. So we decided to make two separate reviews that are completely different from each other. The one you're watching is Tomo and I in a more of a relaxed environment, talking about how the Hydra Short felt underfoot and what we liked about thruster and quad and that kind of stuff. And the other review is gonna be a little bit more about the board attributes. He's gonna talk about his quad inside single concave, the torpedo nose and why, and I think he does a great job separating the Hydra Short from the Hydronaut, the Cymatic, and the SKX. I hope you guys enjoy both. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed today's review on the Hydra Short. We did two reviews for our community to give you guys exactly what you asked for. Tomo, you were gracious with your time. We had a blast surfing together and thank you for the excellent insight on the Hydra Short and some of the other models. Look, if you like the show, subscribe. You can also find us at surfandshow.com. Special shout out thanks to Firewire for sending all the boards down for review. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye. price out of pay Everything I did for you doesn't matter anymore. And a happy.